Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new video. So this video is another video in the Cloud Firestore Python series. So this series is actually a CRUD series where we're learning how to create data, read data, update data, and delete data. So now at this point in this video, we're actually covering updating data. So for more information about the other parts of CRUD, about other features related to Cloud Firestore, you can refer to the playlist, which will be linked down below. You can also get the source code to all of these videos in the GitHub link. In the description. Also, it's worth mentioning that it is actually for beginners, so even if you're not completely familiar with NoSQL or Cloud Firestore, I do have an introductory video about just concepts that's not related to any programming language. So yeah, I just thought I'd get that out of the way. Now regarding this video, so we're going to learn about different types of updates that we can perform using Cloud Firestore and how we're going to do that using the Python code. So to do this, we are actually in our Firestore project. So this is this has been pretty consistent throughout the um, tutorial. So throughout the tutorial series, you can see here we have uh, this is our database. This is my person's collection and a bunch of data. So here I have some generated IDs versus some IDs that we have set ourselves in different parts of the uh, series. So that doesn't really matter. It just matters that this is our given data. So let's let's start coding. Let's see how we're going to do these updates. So I'm here. I'm inside PyCharm. This is a you know somewhat blank-ish project. Doesn't really have any additional um, things beyond the things related to specifically to the series. So for specifically the setup and what you can see here and how all of that is really done, you can refer to the number one video in the playlist where we actually did the setup with Python. So yeah, let's see what we're going to do now. So let's say I want to update data and let's say for now I'm actually working with a known key. Now, why do I always create this distinction between a known key and a unknown key? So like I said, here you have P1 and P2, which maybe by default you would know when you're coding. So obviously you're coding an application that is automated. Let's say, for example, you have an application of users and each user is associated with an ID. Now, if their user ID looks like this, it's not going to be possible for you to know what the user ID is, unless it's obviously stored somewhere related specifically to that user. Meanwhile, on the other hand, let's say I have usernames and these usernames are by default unique and I use those usernames as my ID. So here I would, you know, have like the username actually. So um, like let's say code dot first. So this is my username and this is the this would be the document ID. Or I could actually have an auto ID. So this is the two options we have for documents. Therefore, the way we're going to work with this in the code differs for both known and unknown IDs. So let's see how does it differ and how does it really work. So going back to PyCharm, here I am looking at the update data with known key. So what am I going to do? I want to say that I know the key. So simply all I need to do is db.collection and here I'm going to say persons dot document p1 dot update and now we'll see what we're going to put inside the update now this part should start looking familiar to you if you've covered the other videos in my playlist so you should see that this is how we create a document reference we, we create a collection reference first so db dot collection we give it the collection name so in our case this is persons then we give it um, a reference to the specific document so in our case this is document p1 although this can be virtually any ID, dot update. And now what are we going to put inside the update? So the update actually takes a document or let's say a Python dictionary as a parameter. And let's say I want to update uh, P1. So let's see P1. I want to update their age to be 50 rather than 52. So let's say age, um, maybe string, and we're going to say 50. Make sure this is actually an integer and not a string with quotation marks. So keep this as an integer. Now, if I actually run the update data, so let's see, we see that process has been finished. Now going back to Chrome, we can see that age has been updated to 50. Now, this is a way for us to update, like I said, with a known key. Now, another thing I just wanna mention uh, very quickly is that I can perform this you know, specific update to maybe strings. So now here, I can see the address is in Paris. You know, and now I can just change their address to be somewhere else. So let's say uh, London. And I'm going to comment the previous one out because this is Python code. So this will be executing uh, regardless. You know, it won't memorize if we actually did this part or not. 
So running this, um, this should update the address to London. So yeah, it's taking some time because maybe the bandwidth and okay, now here we go. Uh, yeah, the address is London. So this has been successfully updated. Now, why did I mention this distinction between strings and integers? Mainly because for integers, there is another thing we can do that does not really involve directly subbing the integer. So now I'm just going to copy this and paste it oops, okay, on a new line. And rather than say 50, let's say I'm doing this sort of yearly script. I'm running this script yearly or I'm running this script on someone's birthday or, um, you know, I'm running it on the anniversary of their membership to my specific app or platform. This is, I'm trying to give you an example depending on the potential applications you might have for this database. So what would you do in this case? In this case, you can do something um, that Firestore provides us with, and it is the increment function. So I would say firestore.increment. And now here, this you can pass an integer to this. So if I want to add 10 years to this, or maybe, let's say this wasn't actually an age where we were keeping track of a different type of number, and we were keeping track of someone's books that they have read, or something like that. Let's say I want to increment by 10. Now I can run this. Okay, and now we come back here. Now the age is actually 60 and it's not 50 anymore. So yeah, like I said, this is a, just another way for us to be dealing with integers and um, updating data with Cloud Firestore. Now, so far, well, all we've seen is fields that have already existed. So age and address are fields that have previously existed in P1. But let's say P1 is missing something. Let's say, let's look at P2 actually. So P2 doesn't have neither an address nor an occupation. So we can go ahead and just copy this. So let's say, uh, sorry about that. Let's say P2 also wants to live in London. And now I can run this. And let's see what we have. So P2 now has the address field London. Why am I saying this? This is simply to highlight the fact that if the field does not exist, the field will be created. There will be no exception or error that is thrown and the new updated value will be added to it. So this is just another way for you to add new fields into documents using these sort of same functions. So you can see nothing really differed in this case. It just differed whether or not it previously existed for this specific document. All right, so I guess that would be it for, you know, these basic, you know, primitive type of updates. So these are direct updates to direct fields. Let's talk about the arrays. So here we have the socials, and let's say P2 doesn't have a LinkedIn anymore, they closed it down. So how do I remove this? So let's see, I'm gonna comment this out again and take this part related specifically to P2 and close this and let's see. So I wanna change the socials field because we said here that, uh, right, yes, I need this. So I wanna change the socials field. We said here the socials part um, is an array and I wanna remove LinkedIn. So here's what we say. We say Firestore, this is another Firestore function, dot add a remove, and now we pass this LinkedIn. So this is how we would actually remove a value from an array. So now let me run this. Uh, what have I done? So let's just check this out. Yeah, so this is definitely just, um, this should be a list, obviously. Okay, now we're good. Now if we run this, so let's see, um, yeah, so LinkedIn was removed here. So we have three socials, we have YouTube, LinkedIn, and GitHub, and LinkedIn was removed. Now, another thing we can do other than an array remove, we can actually add stuff to an array. So I'm doing these because I'm trying to show you the more nested operations we can do for the update. So, um, so far, like I said, everything we've been doing has been updating data with a known key. But there's just different types of variations, such as using the increment function, using the array remove function, um, using the array union function. So now I want to add LinkedIn back to P2. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to simply run this. So I changed array remove to array union. And um, the reason before I had an error is because I did not have these here. So I was just simply passing a string to the array remove function, which is wrong. You should pass a list because the list is actually just will, will be performed as a union um, with the uh, current array that already exists. 
So now we can see that, okay, we don't see LinkedIn, let me refresh. Um, this can be slow depending on the type of bandwidth you have. So if the internet gets slow, you, the real-time capabilities of Cloud Firestore will be a bit weaker. So here we go, we have LinkedIn and it's back. So yeah, that's it, how, that's it for how we actually use these area operations to perform updates. And that's really it for updating data with a known key. So now let's say I want to update data with an unknown key. So an unknown key, like we said, it can be um, these, you know, auto-generated IDs that we have in Firestore. So how would you work with this? Well, you cannot really do this without performing some sort of read operation. So you're performing a read operation. What do I mean by this? You're actually reading into the database, looking for the specific documents that you want to update. And for those documents, you will perform an update. The update cannot exist for an unknown key, um, especially, you know, I'm saying an unknown key, that means you don't have it stored somewhere inside your application, you don't have it stored, um, you know, somewhere in, in memory or something. No, this is completely unknown. Let's say I want to update, I want to create a mass update of, let's say, all the documents who have an age greater than 40. So now we can see that, oh, sorry, you can see the people here, they have an age. So let's say I want to go through all the documents. I want the people greater whose age is greater than 40. I want to mark them as middle-aged. So I want to mark them as middle-aged, meaning that you know they are part of the specific age group. How would I do that? The first thing I need to do, and let's say this is the uh, first way, because we're going to do this in two ways. So the first way is to actually get all the information. So db.collection persons dot get so by doing so i actually read all of the present documents in the database so for doc in docs and what am i going to do for each document if doc dot to dict and you cannot actually perform any accessing to this data without using the doc to dict function so this is something we use extensively in my read data video and i'm gonna get the age of this document if it's greater or equal to 40 what i'm going to do is i'm going to First, save the key, so the key is doc.id. Then what I'm going to do is simply db.collection uh, persons dot document. So just like we were doing before, so the exact same sort of methodology, except this time we pass it the key that we have just retrieved for this specific document whose age is greater than 40. And then I'm just gonna update it by giving it an age group field and then assigning this age group to the middle age. So that's really um, what we're going to do. So again, we're going to get all the documents, we're going to iterate over them. Those who have an age greater than 40, we will actually update their age group to the middle age. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run this. Okay, so... So yeah, this should just be age group like this. And now um, we're going to run it. So these are just, you know, normal typos that you can have. Okay, so now we should be able to see the middle-aged um, field. So we can see age group middle-aged for Ron, whose who's age is 40. We don't see one for John. We can see one for this one. Um, this one as well. So they all have an age of 40. Um, let's say here Jane has the age of 50 and she is middle-aged. And yeah, so we can see this here. So here, obviously, there is no one. And like I said, this is the way, the first way, we were able to update data for a document whose ID I do not know. Now, what is another way that we can do this? So another way we can do this is, let's just comment this part, let's copy it actually, and then comment it out. So another way we can do this is not to read all of these specific documents, all the existing documents in the database because this can be super expensive you do not want to perform this many reads into your firebase database especially like me now you can see i have a relatively super small um, database but imagine you have thousands upon thousands of documents this is obviously not practical and honestly what i'm saying really goes back to the read data video because this is stuff that you can use to query so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say age is greater or equal to, for example, uh, let's say 50, and this time we're gonna remove this if statement, we're gonna delete this part, oops, okay. All right, and now we're gonna delete this part. Here we go. 
So now instead of middle age, let's say older than 50. So what's the difference here? The difference here is that I'm only getting the documents related to this specific query, to age is greater or equal to 50. The way I'm doing this makes it much cheaper for our Firebase database. So this is very common because it is the like, brute force approach, but please make sure you actually use some queries, get documents that are relevant to you, that the ones that you need, and then perform your updates. Regardless of that, that's really just a reading or querying technicality. Regardless of that, going back to the update part, which is actually our uh, video, you can check here the following. So you can check that we just took the ID, saved it, and then passed it into the exact same sort of function that we were, not function, a sequence of functions that we were using above with the known IDs. So now I'm going to run this part and just to validate it, and that will be the last thing we do today. So here we go, now we're done, and we should be able to. So for this one, the age is 60, and the age group is older than 50, and this one, the age group is older than 50 as well. So yeah, that's how you would perform these updates. Now, that's it for this video. I really hope it was useful. I know this is super messy with the comments and everything, but the organized source code and commented source code is in GitHub. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.